Hello. So in the first lockdown, I thought to myself, what would make me more annoying and more pretentious than just being a film student? And I started reading. So now I'm that annoying person that watches movies and reads books in their spare time. And yeah, I want to punch me in the face as well. One, two, three bags of books to get through. These were all bought over probably the last few months and a lot of them may have been bought recently when the bookstore is opened. My local bookshop is Waterstones, so I tend to get my books there as well. I got gift vouchers at Christmas, all of that good stuff, so I utilized the hell out of them. Hopefully this will inspire you guys to go buy a load of books so I feel a little less guilty about the amount of books I bought the past few months. Receiving a book in the mail has been my only source of serotonin over the last few months and knowing I get to walk through a bookshop at some stage again. There is something about a bookshop and walking through it that all of your worries disappear. I feel my happiest when I'm in a bookshop. I don't know why. I genuinely don't. Also, I really just became a reader in the last year. I'm not even kidding. When I was in primary school, they used to do these tests where they'd make you read and then they'd pull you aside and they'd be like, so you're 12 years old, but your reading age is six. So get your shit together. And that made me feel really, really, really stupid. Now look at me. I read for fun and I love it. And my reading age is not of a six year old now. When a mirror is apprehended, when a mirror is apprehended at a book, sh so that's my rant, but let's get into the book haul because I'm excited. I'm going to do books that I got while grocery shopping. These were all from Sainsbury's and two of which I've actually read. First one I read was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This was talked about all over Instagram and booktube. This I did not enjoy as much as everybody was saying. It was a good book, but I wanted more from it. I wanted more from the main character. So yeah. I also got this book called Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Obviously Irish author, Irish female author, we love to see it. A lot of people comparing it to normal people, which is interesting to me. I read normal people in one day and I was a mess for like days and days after. So much so of a mess that I actually never watched the TV show because my heart genuinely couldn't hack it. I, I honestly couldn't do it. Yeah. There's number two. So second one I got was Girl, Woman, Other. I've heard nothing but good things about this. So yeah, I'm very curious about this one because I know very little about it. I've seen a few interviews of the author and she seems incredible. So I want to know more. I want to know what the hype is about. This is actually getting me really excited to read. I, I'm, I'm very excited right now. And the fourth one I got while shopping was The Thursday Murder Club. I absolutely loved. I actually read this book. I was really hesitant in getting it because it's hardback but this book made me love hardbacks. It was so fun to read this. I don't even know why, but you could just lie it flat while I was eating breakfast and it just wouldn't like flick all around the place, which I loved. The typography was really spaced out and I loved that. Can you see? It was just such an easy read and it's like this elderly group of people who live in this like retirement village and every Thursday they meet to talk about unsolved cases and murder cases and stuff to try and figure it out themselves. But then a murder happens within their local vicinity and they start trying to solve it. It is so funny. I just want to be friends with these people so bad. I want to have a Thursday murder club. It's actually a second one coming out of this, which I cannot wait for. And actually I did see the other day, this is now in paperback. So if you don't like hardback, 
that's an option, but yeah. So the next category of books I got are books off of Waterstones that I ordered over the last few months in lockdown. First off, we have A Streetcar Named Desire, which is a play. Obviously this book is super short and I'm hoping to read this in one setting some evening when I have a little bit of time, but I really enjoy reading plays with a little bit of filmmaking background. I just like to read the stage cues, all of that good stuff. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about this and the movie with Marlon Brando in it. So I wanna read this soon so I can watch the movie as well. Next one I got is Such a Fun Age by Kelly Reed. This is a Waterstones exclusive where it has the blue sprayed sides, which I love. I think it is so fun on this book. Again, another book I honestly don't know much about, but I'll read the back for you. When Amira is apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping the white child she's actually babysitting, her employer Alex resolves to make things right. So begins a crash course that will upend everything they think they know about themselves, each other, and the messy dynamic of privilege. So again, very, very, very excited to read this one. Most of these books are kind of at like the 300, 350 max page mark. I am terrified of big books. One of my big things for this year is that I want to read Dune before the movie comes out and it is a chunky monkey. I really do enjoy shorter books because I just think it's easier for me and I enjoy them more, but I do want to challenge myself this year to read a longer book. I also got The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a YA book actually. I haven't watched it or read it. There is a movie version of it, but I put this up on my story and I got nothing but people telling me how good this book was, how important it was. So this is definitely on my very soon to be read list. Star lives in two worlds, the poor neighborhood where she was born and raised and her posh high school in the suburbs. The uneasy balance between them is shattered when Star is the only witness to a fatal shooting of her unarmed best friend, Khalil, by a police officer. Now what Star says, could destroy her community. It could also get her killed. I think this is gonna be amazing. It's 411 pages, but I think I will honestly fly through it because a story like that would be incredibly gripping. And yeah, the next book I got online was Shadow and Bone. I basically panic bought this about two weeks before the show was coming out on Netflix because I really wanted to know what it was like to read it. And then as soon as I bought it, I saw nothing but average reviews about the books. Like I've heard the universe is amazing, which is called the Grishaverse, but the Shadow and Bone books weren't that great. So it really had me kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. Fantasy, I'm a little bit on the edge with as well with reading. I find it really difficult to read or just wrap my head around. It's not my favorite genre. So it put me off reading it and I ended up watching the show and I loved the show. So I kind of regretted not reading them then at that point and letting other people's judgments kind of freak me out. But yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might sell it on Depop, I shall see, or I might just give it away to somebody who wants it that I know. But I don't see myself reading this, especially after watching the show. Another book I got was Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro. First of all, can we look at this cover? I know we probably all have seen it at this point. I genuinely bought this with no intention of reading it. It was, I think it ha was like half price so there was money off or something. And I was obsessed with the cover. Like I needed this in my life so badly, but I didn't love Ishiguro's writing when I read Never Let Me Go. Loved the story, definitely haven't stopped thinking about it. But at the same time, I didn't enjoy the reading process. So I don't see myself reading this, but it is so stunning. I had to get it. Another hardback I got was Hamnet. So I was waiting for Hamnet to come out in paperback to read it because at the time I was like, ugh, hardback effort. Again, this came up as half price like two weeks before the paperback came out and I just decided to get it because it's such a beautiful hardback. Without the dust cover, it is so stunning. I also went through a crazy obsession with Shakespeare in my early teens. I honestly think it's because I thought he looked like this guy, which is Josephine's. He is the guy who plays Shakespeare in Shakespeare. Shakespeare in love. They must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear Saint, sin is purged. Urged. And I think my brain got him confused with actual Shakespeare, but I loved studying Shakespeare and I loved everything about him. So I think this will be a really interesting story. From what I've gathered, I hate when the back of books just gives you quotes from other authors, not an actual description. It, I think, follows Shakespeare and his sister or his family. I'm not honestly 100% sure, but it's something to do with him. So I was like, ah. 
I'm excited for it. Again, heard nothing but good things about this one. Okay, so last category is books that I bought recently as soon as the bookstores opened. I went into Waterstones once, kind of like by accident. I kind of like fell into Waterstones and I, oh, and I, ooh. So yeah, basically I went into Waterstones by accident. I was trying not to go in because I knew I would spend money and I did. I got three books that time and then I went again and I got three more books, but the bookstores had just opened and I was very excited. So this is what I got and I think this pile is the pile I'm most excited about. First one we got is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So I never got to study Sylvia Plath in school. I don't know why, but I managed to miss that part of my education. I think there's some books that I just really feel like you have to read, watch, listen to, anything as such, just to get kind of like cultural references or that kind of thing. And I think this book is one of them. It's a short one, very thin, very happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a read very soon. This is the next book I got. I don't want to butcher Kim, Kim June, June. I'm not, I feel really bad. I saw Jack Edwards talk about it and it highly, highly read it. So I knew I had to get it. It's also only 106 pages. It is about the life story of a young woman born at the end of the 20th century, raises questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that are relevant to us all. So I think this could be a really important and interesting book to read at 142 pages. Next one I got, it is Lily King's Writers and Lovers, which I adore this cover. I still have to take all the stickers off most of these. I haven't got round to it yet. Again, this book is blowing up everywhere. I have seen everyone talking about this. Recently out of a devastating love affair and mourning the death of her beloved mom, Cassie is lost. The novel she's been writing for six years isn't going anywhere. Her debt is soaring and at 31 with all her friends getting married and having kids, she feels too old for things to be this way. A female story that I'm very much looking forward to getting stuck into and I will say that about every single book here because I did buy all of these for the simple reason that I am excited to read them all but I have been in a reading rut recently which has been such a pain I'm hoping filming this video and reminding me of all the great books I have around me right now I'll get out of that I need to get out of that next one is the Dutch house it is absolutely stunning super obsessed with this. This is a book I know absolutely nothing about the story, nothing at all, but I have been recommended by some good friends and family to read it. I find it the same with movies for me. I do not like trailers. The most I like is a teaser trailer. Give me just a little hint of what is happening, but don't tell me everything. I really like going into things blind because I sometimes find if I see people's reviews as well, it gives me an automatic bias going into it and I'm looking for that thing that they were picking out that kind of stuff so I do try to avoid reviews and all of that before reading and sometimes I don't even want to read the description of a book I just want to jump straight into it so I know nothing about this which makes me even more excited for it. Then we have The Vanishing Half, which if you can tell, right before this trip to Waterstones, I'd watched Jack Edwards' video of like the eight best books he's read so far this year. And I got two of them, which were these. I do know what this one is about, believe it or not. So this is about two black twins in America, but one of them is white passing and one of them isn't. And one then chooses to live life as a white person. So I'm very, very curious about this one. I think this story is is so interesting to me. I just think it will be such a beautiful dynamic and complex story from two sisters. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. But you will all be glad to know, last but not least, I got Catcher in the Rye by Day. I got Catcher in the Rye by Day. I got Catcher in the Rye by JD Salinger. I got this cover of it, which I was kind of like, oh that's a pity but I was also on a bit of a buying streak and I'd heard on Carly talking about it so much you need to go watch her channel if you don't I'd heard her talking about it so much so I was like fine I'll just get this cover and then I was in Belfast and I saw the original cover and in a hardback form which I loved so 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 much more so you best believe I did buy this even though I had just bought this so if anybody wants this cover let me know because I do not need Two. but at the same time they are both pretty but this is the OG one. Another classic that I feel like I want to read just to be in the loop. 
understand what people are talking about when they talk about JD Salinger and Catcher in the Rye. So yeah, that is my last one. And that is everything I have bought over the last few months, thanks to gift cards, all of that good stuff. I know with Waterstones as well, if you buy 10 books, you get 10 pounds. So I, I, I got that as well, which is so good. I have lots of other books on my wish list as well, so I need to get reading. I have a few short ones here that I really wanna get through and just get me out of this little rut that I've been in. But yeah, there you go. But that's everything. I just thought I would do a little extra video for you this week because I love you all and I kinda miss you during the week. So I'm gonna stack up all these books to see how big this pile actually gets. Hold on. <laughs> Are you ready? I think this is gonna fall over, but I'm scared. Oh my God, that's everything. That is where my money's gone. Yeah, there's my book haul. Take a screenshot, take a photograph, whatever you need to do. That is all the books. I, I also highly recommend making reading a personality trait because it is so fun. It is, I love reading, I genuinely do. So, see you guys next week.